Hello everyone, my name is Zai Weichen. I am a PhD student in the machine learning program at Georgia Institute of Technology. Today I'm going to present my work, Finite Sample Analysis of Stochastic Approximation with Applications in Reinforcement Learning. This is a joint work with my advisor, Professor Maguluri from Georgia Tech, Professor Shakotai from the University of Texas at Austin, and Dr. Shamugan from IBM Research, New York. To motivate the stochastic approximation algorithm, we will first introduce the reinforcement learning problem. Reinforcement learning is used widely in real-world problems. For example, OpenAI 5 for computer games Defense of the Ancients, ArvaGo 0 for the game of Go, robots in virtual worlds, and healthcare, etc. The underlying model for a reinforcement learning problem is a Markov decision process. In a Markov decision process, at time k, the agent is at a certain state of the environment, denoted by sk, and can take some action ak. Then the dynamics of the environment will drive the agent to a new state sk plus 1 and return the agent some reward rk. The rule of choosing actions based on the current state of the environment is called a policy. Therefore, a policy is a mapping from the state space to the action space, which can be either deterministic or stochastic. The performance of a policy pi is measured by its value function. Specifically, the V function of a policy pi at state S is defined to be the expected total reward, starting from state S and then following the policy pi thereafter. Similarly, the Q function of a policy pi at state action pair S comma A is defined to be the total expected reward starting from state S, first taking action A, and then following the policy pi thereafter. The goal of the agent is to find an optimal policy pi star that maximizes the V function, which is the same as maximizes the Q function. The underlying framework of reinforcement learning is essentially Markov decision processes, except that the transition probabilities are unknown to the agent. The ultimate goal of reinforcement learning is to find an optimal policy pi star, which is called the control problem. And as we will see later, that directly leads to the Q-learning algorithm. An intermediate goal of reinforcement learning is to estimate the value function of a given policy pi, which is called the prediction problem or the policy evaluation problem. This is not a trivial problem because even if the policy is given, the transition probabilities are still unknown, as we cannot directly compute the value function. This leads to the TD learning method. To solve the control problem, it is enough to find the Q function associated with the optimal policy, from which we can do the argmax to further compute the optimal policy. It turns out that the optimal Q function uniquely solves a fixed point equation called the Bellman's optimality equation. In the equation for Q star, the left hand side is the total reward starting from the current state action pair, and the right hand side can be viewed as a combination of the one stage reward and the discounted future reward. The Bellman's optimality equation can be compactly written as Q star equal to H of Q star, where H is the Bellman's operator. Note that the definition of the operator H involves expectation with respect to the transition probabilities of the Markov decision process. Therefore, the operator H is unknown to the agent. Similarly, the value function V pi also uniquely solves its corresponding Bellman's equation. To summarize, both the control problem and the prediction problem reduce to solving a fixed point equation h of x equal to x with the non-known operator h. Okay, how do we solve such an equation? Natural way is to perform a fixed point iteration or its small step size variant. Note that to carry out such iteration, we need an oracle such that for every x, it returns the exact value of h of x. Then an intermediate question is, when does the fixed point iteration converge? Well, by Banach fixed point theorem, when the operator H is a contraction with respect to some arbitrary norm, then we have geometric convergence. That is, the distance between the iterate xk and the target solution x star converges exponentially fast as the number of iteration increases. Now suppose that we do not have an accurate oracle our oracle is corrupted by noise, so that for every x, it returns h of x plus some noise. Let's call it w. 
then the fixed point iteration becomes the stochastic iterative algorithm xk plus 1 equal to xk plus step size epsilon k times h of xk minus xk plus noise wk. This is the stochastic approximation algorithm we're going to study, and we're going to make the following two assumptions. One is that the operator h is a contraction with respect to the Suprema norm. The sup norm is of special interest because the Bellman's operator in reinforcement learning is a contraction with respect to the sup norm. The second assumption is that the noise sequence is unbiased, conditioned on the past, and its conditional variance grows at most affinely in terms of the current iterates. We next present our main results, the finite sample convergence guarantees of stochastic approximation algorithm. First of all, when using proper constant step size, we have the following finite sample bounds, which is composed by two terms. The first term goes to zero geometrically fast as k tends to infinity, while the second term is a constant, which is independent of k. Geometrically, this means that the iterate xk converges, converges exponentially fast to a ball centered at the solution x star. And as we will see, the size of the ball is proportional to the constant step size we use, mm -hmm. and the dimensional dependence there is only log d, where d is the dimension of our vector xk. Next, we present the result for using diminishing step sizes. When using diminishing step size of the form epsilon k divided by k with properly chosen epsilon, we have the following finite sample bound. We see that the convergence rate is 1 over k, and the dimension dependence is log b. In general, we cannot hope to improve this bound in terms of the convergence rate or the dimension dependence. To see this, consider the following simple example. My operator h is identically 0 and the noise sequence wk are iid standard normal random vectors. In this case, one can easily show that the iterates xk is just the running average of wk. Hence, xk is a normal random vector with mean zero and covariance matrix being one over square root k times the identity matrix. It follows that the expectation of the subnorm square of xk is of the order log d divided by k. This example demonstrates that our bound is in general tight. Next, let me state the main idea in proving the theorem. First, let us compare the stochastic approximation algorithm to its corresponding ordinary differential equation. It was shown in Boca 2009 that the function fx equal to half times the subnorm square of x can be used as a Lyapunov function to analyze the ODE. Now, how about using fx to analyze the stochastic approximation algorithm? Well, since the stochastic approximation algorithm involves discretization error and the stochastic error, it turns out that what we need is a smooth approximation of the ODE Lyapunov function fx. The smoothness property is used to handle the discretization error, and the approximation property is used to establish, well, is used to establish a contractive recursion between xk plus 1 and xk. Now, to construct such a Lyapunov function, we will use the generalized moral envelope. The idea is to perform an infimal convolution of the ODE Lyapunov function fx with a suitable smooth function g of x. The resulting function mx is called the generalized moral envelope of f with, with respect to g. As we see here, the function m of x is smooth and is an approximation to the original ODE Lyapunov function f of x. After using the Lyapunov function mx on the iterates xk of the stochastic approximation algorithm, we obtain the following recursion here. Note that this inequality indicates that xk is kind of contractive with respect to the Lyapunov function m of x. Well, the last step is to repeatedly use the recursive inequality to derive the finite sample bounds. Okay, enough for stochastic approximation. We next apply our result to the context of reinforcement learning. Our first application is the popular Q-learning algorithm. The Q-learning algorithm can be viewed as a stochastic approximation algorithm for solving the Bellman's optimality equation. We here consider a synchronous version of the Q-learning algorithm. In every iteration, for every state action pair S, comma A, we sample a transition to the next state S prime. Then we update the estimate qk at s, a based on the formula here. Note that the amount of update inside the bracket 
It's just the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the Bellman's equation, after dropping the expectation, of course. It turns out that the Q-learning algorithm can be modeled by the stochastic approximation algorithm we studied before, where the Bellman's operator H is a contraction with respect to the soup norm, and WK is a martingale difference noise whose variance scales F on A in terms of the iterate XK, well, QK. QK. So our result is applicable, and we have the following finite sample convergence guarantees for the Q-learning algorithm. When using constant step size, the iterate QK converges to a ball centered that the optimal solution Q star exponentially fast. And the size of, of the ball is proportional to the step size epsilon. Moreover, the dimension dependence is log of the size of the state action space S times A. When using diminishing step sizes of the form epsilon over K, the convergence, rate, the convergence rate is 1 over k. And as we mentioned before, we cannot hope to improve this bound in terms of either the rate or the dimension dependence. Our next application is about a multi-step off-policy TD learning algorithm called VTrace, which was introduced by Esper Holt et al. 2018. Off-policy means that we want to estimate the value function of some target policy pi while samples are collected by a different policy mu, which is called the behavior policy. To correct the difference between the target policy and the behavior policy, important sampling ratio is introduced. Furthermore, to control the variance in the important sampling ratio, it was truncated at some chosen level. In the VTrace algorithm, in every iteration k for each state x, a sequence of state action pairs was collected under the behavior policy mu. Then the algorithm updates the iterate vk at, uh, at s according to this formula here, where rho t here is the truncated important sampling ratio. It was shown that the vtrace algorithm can be modeled as the stochastic approximation algorithm we studied before, where the multi-step off-policy Bellman's operator is a contraction with respect to the infinity norm, and the noise also satisfy our assumptions. Therefore, we have the following finite sample bounds. As we see here, when using the right diminishing step sizes, the convergence rate is 1 over k, and the dimension dependence is log of s, where s is the size of the state space. OK, in this work, we studied a stochastic approximation algorithm involving a contraction operator, which is used to show convergence bounds for synchronous stochastic approximation algorithms such as Q-learning and VTrace. We are currently extending the result in stochastic approximation so that it can be used to establish convergence bounds for asynchronous stochastic, no, 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 for asynchronous reinforcement learning algorithms. It will be ready in one or two weeks. Okay, that's the end of my talk. Thank you for attending.